Pramana Sanskrit, pramana, pramana literally means proof and means of knowledge. It refers to epistemology in Indian philosophies, and is one of the key, much debated fields of study in Buddhism, Hinduism and Jainism, since ancient times. It is a theory of knowledge, and encompasses one or more reliable and valid means by which human beings gain accurate, true knowledge. The focus of pramana is how correct knowledge can be acquired, how one knows, how one doesn't, and to what extent knowledge pertinent about someone or something can be acquired. Ancient and medieval Indian texts identify six pramanas as correct means of accurate knowledge and to truths: perception (Sanskrit pratyaksa), inference (anumana), comparison and analogy (upamana), postulation (derivation from circumstances (arthapati), non-perception (negative, cognitive proof Anupalabdi, and word (testimony of past or present reliable experts sabda. Each of these are further categorized in terms of conditionality, completeness, confidence and possibility of error, by each school of Indian philosophies. The various schools of Indian philosophies vary on how many of these six are epistemically reliable and valid means to knowledge. For example, Karvaka school of Hinduism holds that only one perception is a reliable source of knowledge, Buddhism holds two perception, inference are valid means, Jainism holds three perception, inference and testimony, while Mimamsa and Advaita Vedanta schools of Hinduism hold all six are useful and can be reliable means to knowledge. The various schools of Indian philosophy have debated whether one of the six forms of pramana can be derived from other, and the relative uniqueness of each. For example, Buddhism considers Buddha and other valid persons, valid scriptures, and valid minds as indisputable, but that such testimony is a form of perception and inference pramanas. The science and study of pramanas is called nyaya. Etymology Pramana literally means proof and is also a concept and field of Indian philosophy. The concept is derived from the Sanskrit root, prama, prama which means, correct notion, true knowledge, basis, foundation, accurate notion. Thus, the concept pramana implies that which is a means of acquiring prama or certain, correct, true knowledge. Pramana forms one part of a trio of concepts, which describe the ancient Indian view on how knowledge is gained. The other two concepts are knower and knowable, each discussed in how they influence the knowledge, by their own characteristic and the process of knowing. The two are called pramater, pramater the subject, the knower, and pramaya, pramaya the object, the knowable. The term pramana is commonly found in various schools of Hinduism. In Buddhist literature, pramana is referred to as pramanavada. Pramana is also related to the Indian concept of yukti, yukti which means active application of epistemology or what one already knows, innovation, clever expedients or connections, methodological or reasoning trick, joining together, application of contrivance, means, method, novelty or device to more efficiently achieve a purpose. Yukti and pramana are discussed together in some Indian texts, with yukti described as active process of gaining knowledge in contrast to passive process of gaining knowledge through observation, perception. The texts on pramana, particularly by Samkhya, Yoga, Mimamsa and Advaita Vedanta schools of Hinduism, include in their meaning and scope, theories of errors. That is why human beings make error and reach incorrect knowledge, how can one know if one is wrong, and if so, how can one discover whether one's epistemic method was flawed, or one's conclusion truth was flawed, in order to revise oneself and reach correct knowledge. <inaudible> <inaudible> Hinduism Hinduism identifies six pramanas as correct means of accurate knowledge and to truths: pratyaksa (perception), anumana (inference), upamana (comparison and analogy), arthapati (postulation, derivation from circumstances), anupalabdi (non-perception, negative, cognitive proof), and sabda (word, testimony of past or present reliable experts). An early late Vedic text, Taittiriya Aranyaka (c. 9th-6th centuries BCE), lists four means of attaining correct knowledge. Smrta, tradition, or scripture, pratyaksa, perception, athiya, tradition, and anumana, inference. In some texts, such as by Vedvyasa, ten pramanas are discussed. Kurtakoti discusses eight epistemically reliable means to correct knowledge. The most widely discussed pramanas are pratyaksa, pratyaksa means perception. 
It is of two types in Hindu texts, external and internal. External perception is described as that arising from the interaction of five senses and worldly objects, while internal perception is described by this school as that of inner sense, the mind. The ancient and medieval Indian texts identify four requirements for correct perception, indriyarthasanikarsa direct experience by one's sensory organs with the object, whatever is being studied, aviapadesya non correct perception is not through hearsay, according to ancient Indian scholars, where one's sensory organ relies on accepting or rejecting someone else's perception, avyabhakara does not wander, correct perception does not change, nor is it the result of deception because one's sensory organ or means of observation is drift Drifting, defective, suspect, and vyavasayatmaka definite, correct perception excludes judgments of doubt, either because of one's failure to observe all the details, or because one is mixing inference with observation and observing what one wants to observe, or not observing what one does not want to observe. Some ancient scholars proposed unusual perception as pramana and called it internal perception, a proposal contested by other Indian scholars. The internal perception concepts included pratibha intuition, samanyalaksana pratyaksa a form of induction from perceived specifics to a universal, and nyanalaksana pratyaksa a form of perception of prior processes and previous states of a topic of study by observing its current state. Further, some schools of Hinduism considered and refined rules of accepting uncertain knowledge from pratyaksa pranama, so as to contrast nirnaya definite judgment, conclusion from anadyavasaya indefinite judgment. Anamana Anamana means inference. It is described as reaching a new conclusion and truth from one or more observations and previous truths by applying reason. Observing smoke and inferring fire is an example of Anamana. In all except one Hindu philosophies, this is a valid and useful means to knowledge. The method of inference is explained by Indian texts as consisting of three parts, pratijna hypothesis, hichu a reason, and durshtanda examples. The hypothesis must further be broken down into two parts, state the ancient Indian scholars, sadhya that idea which needs to proven or disproven and paksha the object on which the sadhya is predicated. The inference is conditionally true if sapaksha positive examples as evidence are present, and if vipaksha negative examples as counter evidence are absent. For rigor, the Indian philosophies also state further epistemic steps. For example, they demand vyapti, the requirement that the hechu reason must necessarily and separately account for the inference in all cases, in both sapaksha and vipaksha. A conditionally proven hypothesis is called a nigamana conclusion. Upamana, upamana means comparison and analogy. Some Hindu schools consider it as a proper means of knowledge. Upamana, states Lochtefeld, may be explained with the example of a traveler who has never visited lands or islands with endemic population of wildlife. He or she is told, by someone who has been there, that in those lands you see an animal that sort of looks like a cow, grazes like cow but is different from a cow in such and such way. Such use of analogy and comparison is, state the Indian epistemologists, a valid means of conditional knowledge, as it helps the traveler identify the new animal later. The subject of comparison is formally called upamayam, the object of comparison is called upamanam, while the attributes are identified as samanya. Thus, explains Monier Williams, if a boy says, Her face is like the moon in charmingness. Her face is upamayam, the moon is upamanam, and charmingness is samanya. The 7th century text Bhattakavya in verses 10.28 through 10.63 discusses many types of comparisons and analogies, identifying when this epistemic method is more useful and reliable, and when it is not. In various ancient and medieval texts of Hinduism, 32 types of upanama and their value in epistemology are debated. Arthapati Arthapati means postulation, derivation from circumstances. In contemporary logic, this pramana is similar to circumstantial implication. As example, if a person left in a boat on river earlier, and the time is now past the expected time of arrival, then the circumstances support the truth postulate that the person has arrived. Many Indian scholars considered this pramana as invalid or at best weak, because the boat may have gotten delayed or diverted. However, in cases such as deriving the time of a future sunrise or sunset, this method was asserted by the proponents to be reliable. Another common example for arthapati in ancient Hindu texts is, that if Devadatta is fat, and Devadatta does not eat in day, then the following must be true. Devadatta eats in the night. 
This form of postulation and deriving from circumstances is, claim the Indian scholars, a means to discovery, proper insight and knowledge. The Hindu schools that accept this means of knowledge state that this method is a valid means to conditional knowledge and truths about a subject and object in original premises or different premises. The schools that do not accept this method, state that postulation, extrapolation and circumstantial implication is either derivable from other pramanas or flawed means to correct knowledge, instead one must rely on direct perception or proper inference. Anupalabdi Anupalabdi means non-perception, negative, cognitive proof. Anupalabdi pramana suggests that knowing a negative, such as, there is no jug in this room, is a form of valid knowledge. If something can be observed or inferred or proven as non-existent or impossible, then one knows more than what one did without such means. In the two schools of Hinduism that consider Anupalabdi as epistemically valuable, a valid conclusion is either sadrupa positive or a sadrupa negative relation, both correct and valuable. Like other pramana, Indian scholars refined Anupalabdi to four types, non-perception of the cause, non-perception of the effect, non-perception of object, and non-perception of contradiction. Only two schools of Hinduism accepted and developed the concept, non-perception, as a pramana. The schools that endorsed Anupalabdi affirmed that it is valid and useful when the other five pramanas fail in one's pursuit of knowledge and truth. Abhava, Abhava means non-existence. Some scholars consider Anupalabdi to be same as Abhava, while others consider Anupalabdi and Abhava as different. Abhava pramana has been discussed in ancient Hindu texts in the context of Padartha, Padartha referent of a term. A Padartha is defined as that which is simultaneously a Stitva existent, J Nayotva knowable, and Abhidayatva nameable. Specific examples of Padartha, states Bartley, include Dravya substance, Guna quality, Karma activity, motion, Samanya jati universal, class property, Samavaya inherence, and Vishesha individuality. Abhava is then explained as reference of negative expression, in contrast to reference of positive expression in Padartha. An absence, state the ancient scholars, is also existent, knowable, and nameable. Giving the example of negative numbers, silence is a form of testimony, a Sakaryavada theory of causation, an analysis of deficit as real and valuable. Abhava was further refined in four types, by the schools of Hinduism that accepted it as a useful method of epistemology, dhvamsa termination of what existed, achyanta abhava impossibility, absolute non-existence, contradiction, anyanya abhava mutual negation, reciprocal absence and pragavasa prior, antecedent non-existence, sabda sabda means relying on word, testimony of past or present reliable experts. Hirayana explains sabda pramana as a concept which means reliable expert testimony. The schools of Hinduism which consider it epistemically valid suggest that a human being needs to know numerous facts, and with the limited time and energy available, he can learn only a fraction of those facts and truths directly. He must rely on others, his parent, family, friends, teachers, ancestors and kindred members of society to rapidly acquire and share knowledge and thereby enrich each other's lives. This means of gaining proper knowledge is either spoken or written, but through sabda words. The reliability of the source is important, and legitimate knowledge can only come from the sabda of reliable sources. The disagreement between the schools of Hinduism has been on how to establish reliability. Some schools, such as Karvaka, state that this is never possible, and therefore sabda is not a proper pramana. Other schools debate means to establish reliability. Different schools of Hindu philosophy accept one or more of above pramanas as valid epistemology. Topic: <laughs> Karvaka school. Karvaka school accepted only one valid source of knowledge perception. It held all remaining methods as outright invalid or prone to error and therefore invalid. Vaisheshika school Epistemologically, the Vaisheshika school considered the following as the only proper means of knowledge Perception pratyaksa, Inference anumana. Sankhya, Yoga, Vishishtadvaita Vedanta, and Dvaita Vedanta schools 
According to the Sankhya, Yoga, and two sub-schools of Vedanta, the proper means of knowledge must rely on these three pramanas Pratyaksa — perception Anumana — inference Sabda — testimony, word of reliable experts <laughs> Nyaya school The Nyaya school accepts four means of obtaining knowledge pramana, viz., perception, inference, comparison and word. Perception, called pratyaksa, occupies the foremost position in the Nyaya epistemology. Perception is defined by sense-object contact and is unerring. Perception can be of two types, ordinary or extraordinary. Ordinary laukika or sadharana perception is of six types, viz. visual by eyes, olfactory by nose, auditory by ears, tactile by skin, gustatory by tongue and mental by mind. Extraordinary alaukika or asadharana perception is of three types, viz. samanyalaksana perceiving generality from a particular object, janyanalaksana when one sense organ can also perceive qualities not attributable to it, as when seeing a chili, one knows that it would be bitter or hot, and yoga when certain human beings, from the power of yoga, can perceive past, present and future and have supernatural abilities, either complete or some. Also, there are two modes or steps in perception, viz., nirvikalpa, when one just perceives an object without being able to know its features, and savakalpa, when one is able to clearly know an object. All laukika and alaukika pratyakshas are savakalpa. There is yet another stage called pratyabhijna, when one is able to re-recognize something on the basis of memory. Inference, called anumana, is one of the most important contributions of nyaya. It can be of two types, inference for oneself svartanumana, where one does not need any formal procedure, and at the most the last three of their five steps, and inference for others parathanumana, which requires a systematic methodology of five steps. Inference can also be classified into three types, purvavat inferring an unperceived effect from a perceived cause, sesavat inferring an unperceived cause from a perceived effect and samanyatadrsta when inference is not based on causation but on uniformity of co-existence. A detailed analysis of error is also given, explaining when anumana could be false. Comparison, called upamana. It is produced by the knowledge of resemblance or similarity, given some pre-description of the new object beforehand. Word, or sabda are also accepted as a pramana. It can be of two types, vaidika Vedic, which are the words of the four sacred Vedas, or can be more broadly interpreted as knowledge from sources acknowledged as authoritative, and laukika, or words and writings of trustworthy human beings. <laughs> Prabhakara Mimamsa school In Mimamsa school of Hinduism linked to Prabhakara considered the following pramanas as proper, Pratyaksa perception, anumana inference, sabda word testimony, upamana comparison analogy, arthapati postulation presumption. Topic: <inaudible> Advaita Vedanta and Bada Mimamsa schools. In Advaita Vedanta and Mimamsa school linked to Kumarila Bada, the following pramanas are accepted. Pratyaksa perception, anumana inference, sabda word testimony, upamana comparison analogy, arthapati postulation presumption, anupalabdi abhava non-perception cognitive proof using non-existence. Topic <inaudible> Buddhism. <inaudible> <inaudible> Padmakara Translation Group 2005, p. 390, annotates that Strictly speaking, pramana t shad ma means valid cognition. In Buddhism practice, it refers to the tradition, principally associated with Dignaga and Dharmakirti, of logic R -tags -rigs and epistemology. Blow -rigs. Buddhism accepts only two pramana t shad ma as valid means to knowledge, pratyaksha mngon sum t shad ma, perception and anumana rjesdpag t shad ma, inference. Rinpoche adds that Buddhism also considers scriptures as third valid pramana, such as from Buddha and other valid minds and valid persons. This third source of valid knowledge is a form of perception and inference in Buddhist thought. 
Valid scriptures, valid minds and valid persons are considered in Buddhism as avisambedan mi slu ba, incontrovertible, indisputable. Means of cognition and knowledge, other than perception and inference, are considered invalid in Buddhism. In Buddhism, the two most important scholars of pramana are Dignaga and Dharmakirti. Satrantrika Dignaga and Dharmakirti are usually categorized as expounding the view of the Satrantika tenets, though one can make a distinction between the Satrantikas following scripture Tibetan, Wiley, Lung Grjes Brang Gmdosde Pa and the Satrantikas following reason Tibetan, Wiley, Riggs Pa Rjes Brang Gmdosde Pa and both these masters are described as establishing the latter. Dignaga's main text on this topic is the Pramana Samukhaya. These two rejected the complex Abhidharma-based description of how in the Vebasika school and the Satrantika following scripture approach connected an external world with mental objects, and instead posited that the mental domain never connects directly with the external world but instead only perceives an aspect based upon the sense organs and the sense consciousnesses. Further, the sense consciousnesses assume the form of the aspect Sanskrit, Sakaravada of the external object and what is perceived as actually the sense consciousness which has taken on the form of the external object. By starting with aspects, a logical argument about the external world as discussed by the Hindu schools was possible. Otherwise their views would be so different as to be impossible to begin a debate. Then a logical discussion could follow. This approach attempts to solve how the material world connects with the mental world, but not completely explaining it. When pushed on this point, Dharmakirti then drops a presupposition of the Satrantrika position and shifts to a kind of Yogacara position that extramental objects never really occur but arise from the habitual tendencies of mind. So he begins a debate with Hindu schools positing external objects then later to migrate the discussion to how that is logically untenable. Note there are two differing interpretations of Dharmakirti's approach later in Tibet, due to differing translations and interpretations. One is held by the Gelug school leaning to a moderate realism with some accommodation of universals and the other held by the other schools who held that Dharmakirti was distinctly anti-realist. Apoha A key feature of Dignaga's logic is in how he treats generalities versus specific objects of knowledge. The Nyaya Hindu school made assertions about the existence of general principles, and in refutation Dignaga asserted that generalities were mere mental features and not truly existent. To do this he introduced the idea of apoha, that the way the mind recognizes is by comparing and negating known objects from the perception. In that way, the general idea or categories of objects has to do with differences from known objects, not from identification with universal truths. So one knows that a perceived chariot is a chariot not because it is in accord with a universal form of a chariot, but because it is perceived as different from things that are not chariots. This approach became an essential feature of Buddhist epistemology. Madhyamaka. The contemporary of Dignaga but before Dharmakirti, Bhavavivaka, incorporated a logical approach when commenting upon Nagarjuna. He also started with a Satrantika approach when discussing the way appearances appear, to debate with realists, but then took a middle way view of the ultimate nature of phenomenon. But he used logical assertions and arguments about the nature of that ultimate nature. His incorporation of logic into the middle way system was later critiqued by Kandrakirti, who felt that the establishment of the ultimate way of abiding since it was beyond thought and concept was not the domain of logic. He used simple logical consequence arguments to refute the views of other tenet systems, but generally he thought a more developed use of logic and epistemology in describing the middle way was problematic. Bhavavivaka's use of autonomous logical arguments was later described as the Svatantrika approach. In Tibet Modern Buddhist schools employ the three spheres Sanskrit, Trimandala, Tibetan, Kor Gsum. Subject Object, and 
Action. When Madhyamaka first migrated to Tibet, Santaraksita established a view of Madhyamaka more consistent with Bhavavivaka while further evolving logical assertions as a way of contemplating and developing one's viewpoint of the ultimate truth. In the 14th century, Jasangkapa presented a new commentary and approach to Madhyamaka, which became the normative form in Tibet. In this variant, the Madhyamaka approach of Kandrakirti was elevated instead of Bhavavivaka's yet Tsongkhapa rejected Kandrakirti's disdain of logic and instead incorporated logic further. The exact role of logic in Tibetan Buddhist practice and study may still be a topic of debate, but it is definitely established in the tradition. Ju Mipham remarked in his 19th century commentary on Santaraksita's Madhyamakalankara. See also Hindu philosophy Nyaya Buddhist logic Epistemology Metaphysics <laughs>